Hi guys, so today we have two stories. The first story is of a returning character, Boblin the Goblin. And the second story is about a tinker and his bomb bag. So as always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you at the end of the video. Back due to high demand and my favourite neckbeards, e Covering the story, I bring you Boblin the Goblin. Be me, sadistic DM. Low rolling as always. Human paladin and owner of Boblin. Can roll an animal handling check to communicate with his rabid friend. Boblin the Goblin rogue. Likes shiny things and stabbing people. Can't speak common, but is the bestest at speaking goblin. Barbarian half work with really high constitution, but dumber than a rock. Not yet dead at the point of this story, oh, and spoiler. Boblin minding his own business, stealing things from a local church. Holy relics or whatnot, it looks shiny. Rolls for stealth, one. Rolls again using luck, can re-roll three d20s a day, one. Rolls again using luck, five. Rolls again using luck, natural 20. Yeah! Yeah, yeah. Pure skill. <laughs> yeah. Managed to steal a few shiny things. Puts it in his bag of swag. Sneaks through hallways. Hears voices coming from behind a door. Looks through door crack. A priest in fancy clothing smiling, while another dark hooded figure gives him a sack of shiny things. Saying strange words in a strange language. Priest hands hooded figure a shiny thing covered in diamonds. Knows that diamonds are valuable. Can be treated for many shinies. Hooded figure seems on guard, better not risk it. Goes down a hallway, church built like an Ikea, Boblin can't find his way out. Guards come down a hallway, Boblin ducks into a room to the side. Human paladin sees Boblin and grabs him. Asks what Boblin is doing, no response. Sees bag of swag, empties it. A few shiny copper coins fall out and a piece of jewellery adorning the symbol of his religion on it. Boblin becomes distressed, he worked hard to steal, earn his loot. Boblin hisses to be dropped. <laughs> Paladin thinks he's cute as he's holding a small goblin by the shirt while it's hissing at him. Decides to give Boblin to the church head priest for judgement. Boblin, not being able to escape, tries to play cute to seduce the paladin. Natural one. <laughs> you turn to the paladin holding you. Do a wide smile as your eye pops out of its socket. <laughs> Extremely painful, you start screaming. <laughs> Paladin looks extremely confused. Casts a quick cure wound spell. You see a blinding light as your pain is gone and your eye is placed back into its socket. Boblin is so happy, he offers his most shiniest possession to Paladin. You see the goblin reach into a hidden pocket. Instinctively, you drop him and jump back thinking it's a weapon. The goblin picks itself up and pulls out a perfectly spherical silver object, practically glowing with divinity. This is the mark of an angel. And only the purest of souls could ever get one, let alone hold one. Boblin gives the round shiny to Paladin. As Paladin picks it up, his hand starts burning. Even this Paladin, devoted to his god, isn't totally pure of heart to such an extent he can hold it. Drops holy artifact as it goes back into Goblin's palms. Boblin, confused by this, throws it at the Paladin. It bounces back into his hidden pocket. Paladin casts Detect Good and Evil on Boblin. The glow of Angel's mark obscuring his vision, but he can see that Boblin is far from pure of heart. Goes to Head Priest with Boblin on his shoulders, unsure what to do. Meets Head Priest and bows. Boblin recognises this person as the one who gave the diamond shiny to the hooded figure. Boblin manages to steal the bag of gold before Priest notices, or so he thinks. After explaining what happened, Priest asks Paladin if he can leave him and Boblin alone. Paladin goes out. Priest pulls out some diamond covered thing he gave to the cloaked figure and puts it in a swag bag. Priest tries to take the shiny stone from Boblin. Hand catches fire but the fire is black and not red. Boblin severs the priest's Achilles heel with a well aimed shot from his throwing knife. Paladin comes in at the sound of fighting. Sees his master burn with unholy fire as he clutches the holy relic. Casts detect good and evil on Priest. He's evil alright. And not only evil, but proper really evil. The worst kind of evil. Sees a Boblin, although not pure of heart, has something strange to him. His essence is covered by black, but has a faint seed of good in the middle of it that seems to pulse with the paladin's heartbeat. Decides to take Boblin, who is clutching onto the bag, and show his fellow paladins who has been deceiving them this entire time. After gathering everyone, a paladin exposes the head priest for who he really is while defending Boblin. 
Head priest comes in like nothing happened and acts surprised as someone would think that and asks for proof. Head priest takes Boblin's swag bag and pulls out a holy relic and a huge sack of gold stolen from them. Paladin remembers he already checked the bag. Bastard planted evidence. Not only that, but he's using Boblin as an alibi for all the holy relics that have disappeared. Has no defence. Head priest tells Paladin to hand Boblin over to be burned at the stake. Paladin says no. Dickhead, not demon lord priest, tells Paladin he's banned for refusing to burn the heretic who have stolen their holy relics on the stake. The priest turns to the gathering of paladins to order them to take him out. Boblin, taking this chance, pickpockets the head priest, stealing a few shinies and some non-shinies. Paladin speaks up against head priest, but to no avail. His fellow paladins, close friends and even families look at him with disdain as they shove him out of the church. Paladin swears he will expose the head priest for who he really is. Boblin is happy to be out of Ikea, but can see Paladin is broken and alone in this world. Goes over to Paladin and picks up his hand, sits next to him and sings while he holds the broken man's hand. Rolls natural 20 on performance check. Paladin, you hear a divine voice coming from your right side as you turn to see the goblin you rescued. And since your spell hasn't ended, you see the light in his essence grow ever so slightly and shine stronger. You also notice that it's currently raining, but you never get wet. It's like the rain just bounces off you. You get the feeling this goblin is special. Boblin pulls out his sack of swag and shows the paladin the shinies and non-shinies he stole from the head priest. You see an assortment of coins and even a gold coin, but there's something more interesting there. The mark of the Assassin's Guild. Paladin decides to go down to the local tavern, only to be thrown out since the whole city is controlled by the church. Paladin gets carried out of the city walls and is forbidden to ever enter. Boblin sneaks out with a cask of ale in a swag bag and shares with Paladin. They head into the woods to find a place to sleep and find a wounded half-orc female who, initially hostile, warms up when Boblin tells her something in Goblin. Human sad, human good. Shiny human stone building bad. Not good. Apparently these two had met. Paladin casts cure wounds on her and they join up as a party using the half-orcs camp as a place to sleep. Boblin continues to cause havoc all around the city to the paladin's enjoyment. Never doing any harm to anyone but stealing important items like stock keeping books and shiny coins out of head priest's pocket. Boblin also throws the shiny glowing marble at the paladin when he's sleeping in hopes that it won't bounce back. It always does and the paladin always catches fire, never getting a good night's rest. <laughs> Boblin likes to sleep on top of the half-orc barbarian since she's usually hot with anger and Boblin likes heat. This goes on for a few days. The party decides to take down the assassins in order to expose the head priest in some way. Be me, Tinker Tom. Likes explosions, set out to make the largest bomb in the universe. Be not me. Horrified DM. Horrified party. <laughs> I can see that yeah. face already. Wake up with no memories on a giant battleship with nobody around. All I have is my special bag of holding and I'm surrounded by black powder. Start putting black powder in bag of holding while party meets each other. My special bag of holding has some neat features. One of them being the ability to empty all its contents instantly. Level cap for that ability is 16. I'm level 1. Darn. About half a year later in real life, reach the demon lord's castle or something. Everyone in party's gear is way better than mine. I got hand-me-downs from all of them. Use every copper, silver, gold and platinum coins on gunpowder and explosives the entire campaign. DM thinks my character has a hard on for explosive things. I did sometimes use a bit of powder on our journeys. Little does he know my very long term plan. Reach Demon Lord. Managed to sneak into his main dining room where he was currently sat with every high ranking minion he had. Party devises a plan. I say one word that gets their attention. Nook him. Party wonders how. My bag of holding currently has about 277,782 pounds of black powder in it, equivalent to one megaton of TNT. Words can't describe the ensuing explosion that happened, so I'll give some real world examples. One megaton is equivalent to 1,000 kiloton. The larger of the two nuclear bombs dropped in Japan, Fat Man, was 20 kiloton. Let that sink in. I'm about to explode enough black powder to create a bomb with a yield 50 times larger than the largest bomb used against another nation ever. 
to utterly obliterate the Demon King that was probably enjoying some good wine and company. DM gives a horrified look, tries to shut down the plan with, that much powder would take up all the space in every room of this castle and you will all die of suffocation. Our wizard has a teleport scroll, right? To which the wizard replied with, yeah, I can get us as far away as necessary. DM tells us that I would die since someone has to empty the bag. I tell the DM that this bag of holding can empty its entire contents all by itself, even has a timer for when to do so. DM looks at us. All right then, but one wrong step and this might be a party wipe. Tread carefully. We come up with a plan. Put the bag of holding down. Set it on one minute. Put down a torch to make sure the explosives go off. They've opened fires all around the castle, but I wanted to be safe. Teleport away to a nearby city. Look in the general direction of the castle. Wait. <laughs> Prophet. Everything goes as planned as we teleport away. Wizard being a wizard teleported us on top of the royal palace, where under 30 seconds we were surrounded by guards. Ask us why we are there. I say, we have been sent by a god who wished to punish the wicked. I shouted loudly enough for the king who was on his deck about one floor down heard me. King tells him to arrest us. Then we see a glimpse of a very strong light. The guard turns around only to be blinded by the bright white flash. The king looks astounded as he just caught a glimpse of a god's divine judgement. A few minutes pass of everyone gawking at my creation. My child. Big Bertha as I call her. Then we feel the earth shaking as a supersonic shockwave looms on the horizon. I yell to everyone that they need to plug their ears. They do. Nobody questions a servant sent by God himself. A sound louder than anything that has ever graced this land blows out all the windows. Knock people over. Make buildings that were poorly built fall. The shockwave was so large, even people on another continent clearly heard it. Then silence. The guards shaking as the vision of me with a giant glowing mushroom cloud from hell behind me stood before them. I had a wicked smile. A smile no sane man could ever have. Entire party looked at me. Not out of pride, not out of glee, but out of fear. A single person with a world destroying power. A minute passes, everyone looking at me. Well, that was fun, but I bet I can make a bigger one next time around. King's expression widens, utter fear. No man could ever have been as fearful as he was now. Y y you made that? That explosion of divine judgment? Yep, I replied eagerly. So God himself didn't make it? The king asks. Sure didn't, I replied, just as eagerly. A week later, mages from all countries came to visit the guards who had a first-hand experience of the situation. They used a mind-reading spell along with a lie-detecting spell in order to verify that I was truly the one who made it. Then they see me in the guards' minds, arms stretched out, wicked mad smile, fire in my eyes and behind me a giant mushroom cloud brighter than the sun itself. One month later, I am the Pope of a church with the most wildly spread religion in the world. Religion big enough that it actually creates the god I pretend to serve. The god is a total bro and we chat regularly. He even asked me for help devising galaxy creating explosions. Gave me a set of decked out armour and made my companions to champions of his. Oh, and the name of my church you ask? Well, we go by many names, but the one people adopted most frequently was the Church of the Mushroom Cloud. You think this was the end of the campaign? Everyone with a happy ending? Well, it's still ongoing and I might post what happens when my character grows bored of being a Pope. As for now, I'll go to bed. Happy New Year, folks. Let's start next year with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about you guys, but we did ask for more Bob and stuff. And, and we got it! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Um, so if you're interested at all, the guy that wrote this, he's got a YouTube channel. I'm going to link it down in the comments below called Blue Bean Productions. It's a gameplay channel, but, you know, like, he is the author. So if you really enjoyed Bob, then I recommend going ahead and checking him out. You yeah. may as well. Like, you know, you may as well. And I lo must say, I really enjoyed the Tinker one. Yeah, so did I. I really enjoyed it. There's something about... I I it was a fun... It was. Yeah. It was a fun wee one. And... You know, I like to kind of do like longer videos or maybe even big, like long multi part ones, like like LARP camp or something like that. Yeah, but so, then you mess out in the short ones that 
You, yeah. you know, you can put a couple into your video. Yeah, you know, you can yeah. slap a few together and like, you and know. sometimes shorter ones are better. Yeah, they can be, yeah. they can be. But look, as always, guys, let us know what you thought down below. Um, thanks for everyone buying the models. We've also got a bit of an announcement. We're going to be doing something for them Australian wildfires. So keep an eye out for that, but won't really talk too much about that yet. But anyway, as always, hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! All done.